Tanks and culverts are crucial structures in today's society. This video will investigate the structural aspects of tanks and culverts using rubber bands as supports, curved silo walls, and marbles as granular media. The rubber band supports create reaction forces pushing inwards, which counteract the pressure force of the marbles in the silo pushing outwards. Our first goal was to figure out the optimal placement of the supports to allow the maximum amount of marbles without failure of the silo. The outwards pressure forces of the marbles in the silo increases directly with depth as more marbles are added, producing the largest loads at the bottom. As a result, the reaction forces created by the rubber bands are directed inwards towards the wall segments. Much like water pressure, the pressure exerted by the marbles gives a triangular distribution of load. Thus, the placement of the rubber band determines how well the silo stands. Putting a single rubber band at the top was ineffective as the load was heaviest at the bottom. Placing it nearer the bottom was also not enough to overcome the outwards forces. With the introduction of another band, the silo became much stronger, but they still could not sustain the outwards horizontal forces. Finally, similar to a grain silo, more bands were placed at the bottom and fewer at the top, which was most effective. There was a smaller moment being produced at the top than at the bottom, and so a higher concentration of bands was needed near the bottom. Static and kinetic friction between the particles of granular media play a huge role in the stability of the silo. This is demonstrated clearly when the silo is close to failure. When the silo is at capacity, the static friction of the marbles reduces the horizontal load exerted on the walls. This is because the motion of the marbles moving outwards is resisted by the friction of the marbles on each other. However, when a new marble is dropped, the static friction is overcome and the marbles begin to slide. This new motion can cause the silo to fail, because the only thing keeping it from breaking was the static friction between the particles. This is why there is a K value for soil loads. The K value represents a reduced horizontal load. Through this experiment, it is clear that the reduced horizontal load is caused by the friction between the particles. If the particles were wet, then this static friction would not come into play. If the particles were extremely wet, they would fluidize and the static friction would be eliminated altogether. The static friction between granular media also comes into play when talking about the foundations of buildings. For example, if an earthquake occurs, it would disrupt the static friction between the particles of soil on the foundation and cause the building to shift and become unstable. In order to come up with the best way to position the rubber bands, we must understand how compression works in the silo structure. Compression acts inwards towards the center of the silo, and these compressive forces are proportional to the force exerted by the marbles. As the number of the marbles increase inside the silo, the rubber bands will attempt to shorten their length by compressing the walls of the silo inwards. The rubber bands act as elastic force, which act as a reserve force on the wall of the structure to make it stable. If the normal force from the wall inside the silo is equal to the elastic force acting outside the silo, the structure will be in equilibrium, otherwise it will fail. Although water-filled pipes are different than the silos filled with granular media we replicated during the activity, some of the same principles apply. As demonstrated earlier, the forces of the granular media acting on the silo are greatest at the furthest depth within it. When studying pipes, a similar observation can be made with fluid, as the greatest exerted force would be at the lowest depth of the fluid within its container. This best explains why frozen pipes that fail will tear along the pipe's length as opposed to its circumference. Water expands when it freezes, while the metal of the pipe will contract in response to the drop in temperature. These combined conditions result in an increase in the pressure of the water on the interior of the pipe. The pipe will tear where the tension of the pipe exceeds its ability to bend. This will be the point where the greatest force is exerted, which occurs at the greatest depth within the pipe. For a horizontally oriented pipe, the highest area of pressure, or greatest depth, will run along the horizontal length of the bottom of the pipe. Therefore, when the force of the water overcomes the pipe's ability to produce an equivalent reaction force, the pipe will fail and a tear is created along the length of the frozen pipe. 